Elites, what's going on? We live action. You already know what it is. That's right. Welcome to my first official review of Attack on Titan. Yes, we all know what I did on my Facebook fan page. I got those 20 hell yes. I made a little uh, mini video, you know, saying thank you and everything that I'm going to go through with it. Now, of course, technically, this is my very first anime review, okay? We all know I review Bleach, but that's, you know, a manga. Now, normally with my Bleach reviews, I do a quick recap of the events that happen throughout the, uh, the issue. But in this case, since this is an anime and naturally an episode is longer than what, some 19 pages of a chapter, I feel a recap isn't necessary unless I get enough fan, fan requests that you all want me to do a recap of a whole episode. So what I'm going to do, okay, I'm going to talk about the main focus of the episode, what I liked, what I didn't like, etc. So let's get into this motivator. This is titled, uh, Attack on Titan Episode 6, The World She Saw, Battle of Trost 2. Now, one thing I noticed about this episode is it was really heavily focused on Misaka. Basically, it explained the way she is, and I really enjoyed the way this episode was. Oh, here's a little quick keynote. Um, since I'm not reading the manga, you know, at this point now, you won't hear me say things like, okay, this chapter, I mean, this episode... Uh, cover chapters this through this or one thing I know is about this versus the manga so you won't hear me say that so this is just straight up brand new for me everything so anyway this was heavily focused on Masaka and of course before it heads over to Masaka Armin we get a little bit of uh, backstory on him how he really felt that at first he really realized that the world that he lived in like it was just hell from the get-go even before he started fighting those titans how he felt like the strong devour the weak and he actually felt like, damn, okay, yes, um, Aaron and Masaka, they saved me, but they looked at me as I'm weak. And he didn't like to be looked at as weak. He wanted to be just as strong as them. He wanted to be equals, and he hated that. So he was also just feeling like, damn, I couldn't protect um, Aaron or anything. And one thing I did notice, I always visioned this, and I see it happen in this episode. You know, that 3D maneuver gear they have, or those prongs when they go to stick into something. What if it doesn't penetrate? Then what happened? I see that's what happened. It hit the wall for whatever reason. He just, you know, it didn't go through for whatever reason that he failed. Um, on to Masaka. And now, it will blew, no, first, before it, it blew me away, I'm thinking the civilians already evacuated. We see this guy, he's the leader of the Trade Federation of that town. He's trying to get all his supplies and riches through and letting all the civilians just sit there. And we see an abnormal type, this motivator, he's running all crazy. He's getting ready to kill, to kill them all, but we see Masaka. She comes through in a sweet way. Hook the uh, Titan in the back of the neck, pulls himself closer, bam, take it down. And we notice her blades uh, there are messed up and jagged and dull from the attack. So, when, you know, one thing I did like, one of the things I did like, when that soldier, I think he looked at her and said, how did you get to be, you know, never mind. And she looked at him, and then that's when she puts the scarf on, and then she was thinking, like, for some reason, I don't know why, but now I'm starting to trigger these uh, events, like, for a reason. But it was that, I could, I could relate to that. Somebody can't ask you a question about yourself. That about, well, because I feel the past makes you who you are, you know, so that question, what he said, you know, he, it made her trigger her past events. And so we got to see a flashback of Masaka to, to where it explains how she is today and I, uh, I I did like the way that was portrayed you know of course it was unfortunate her parents got killed in front of her eyes and we see Aaron it seems like he was just he didn't he didn't hesitate to kill at all I guess when that door opened up and he was with his father and he seen those dead bodies there it's, it's I mean he wasn't afraid to kill that one guy and we see Masaka she didn't want to kill she was afraid she was hesitant when Aaron was getting choked up, but he was he kept telling her, kill if you want to live out. You have to fight if you want to survive. You know, this is a doggy dog, survival of the fittest, fittest. And I love that part when you see that spark, the electricity go all over her brain, all over her body. It just triggered her survival instinct. And that's when she made her first kill. And ever since then, she realized that's what it was going to take to survive, especially now that her family is gone. So now, of course, it turns out her new family now is uh, Aaron and his father. So, and we, and, and he gives her the scarf. So now that explains how she got the scarf. But the main thing I noticed about the episode was at the very end when, uh, of course, she was taking out some more Titans. And she, you know, I'm like, damn. See, it seemed like, 
out of everybody I've seen so far, she's taken out the most Titans already. But at the end of the episode, she felt like as long as um, I have you, I feel like I can do anything. So my main thing I'm thinking about now, how is her mentality going to be? How is she going to react when she feels that Aaron is dead or that he's supposed to be dead? So is this going to basically make her depressed? Is this going to affect her fighting spirit? Or is this going to spark some some revenge towards the Titans, some kind of extra hate towards the Titans the same way Aaron had hate for the, uh, for the Titans? But I think something like this, this could make Armin and Masaki stronger. First in this situation, according to the preview, of course the little guy's Masaki, she's going to run into um, Armin. And he's going to explain what happened and you know, she might have her flip out moment. If not, he might she might give him that pep up talk to make things um better and copacetic with him, but I don't even think that's gonna happen. So I that's no, that's kinda iffy right there. And as far as the rest of the characters go, the, I forget the one guy's name. He got shortcut hair. He was talking to Armin in the beginning. I think his name started with a C. I'm more interested to know about uh, his past and his backstory. I really am. But to me, like I said, the episode's good. We got a flashback, and I, I'm starting to like Masaka's character. I mean, for all my Bleach fans, I can have Rukia, but for her, you know, I'm, I'm really liking her character. Some say she's dull or has no personality or she's bland, but she has personality. It's just the type of personality you all do not like. I mean, if she didn't, if her killer instinct wouldn't have triggered if... Aaron didn't spark that. She probably just been one of those regular old, you know, ditzy witsy, sha la 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 kind of females. But that's the, that's not the case. I don't even think she would have joined the military if she would um if that if what happened to her. I mean, I don't even think she would have joined if that wouldn't happen to her. Like if her parents uh, would have still been alive, I don't even think she would have joined at all. Um, or maybe no, nah, she probably would have. Maybe she. Maybe, just maybe she would have she would have told Armin, like, well, look, I don't want you to get hurt. I'm going to go along with you. But we see now that maybe, I guess I could be wrong, that she is she wants to watch over Armin to keep him alive so she can keep her drive, her motivation uh, alive. You know, like like she said, I feel like I can do anything as long as Armin is around. But like I said, good episode. Um, we got backstory. Unfortunately, nothing was explained about Aaron, I think that'll happen next episode, but um, yeah, I just enjoyed it. Not much, basically, too much to talk about when I um, get to the main topic, like, I mean, the main basis of the episode, but that's my thing about body leads. One of the things I will say this, though, I've been reading that other people have, like, viewers and even other YouTubers have been spoiling the series for people who not who do not read the manga. Or who haven't caught up in the manga. And a lot of people have been getting pissed off about that. Of course. So, for the love of God. Alright. For the love of grits and gravy and everything that's holy. Do not spoil the series for me. Alright. I've been told. Um, if that continues to happen. What I should do. I mean, if it happens or continues to happen. What I should do is just. Uh, block or disable the comments. You know. So people won't be able to leave comments. But I don't think y'all do that. You know, I don't even think I have to go to that much extreme measures but yeah good episode i give it a let's see because i because i go if you, if you all haven't noticed by now even in my bleach reviews i say bad okay good great or if the, the chapter is just over the top i'll say like perfect or flawless so this wasn't a bad episode it wasn't great either to me i give episode seven a good so that's my thoughts about it thanks for watching this covers my first review of attack on titan I'll see you all next week. Thanks for watching.